Okay, about uh, cost, okay. profit, margin, so overall profitability. Do profit we have to put uh, real numbers or, or just well, a zero total? Yeah, you, you can kind of do both. If you have studied sufficiently well the industry, you will understand and have a pretty decent idea. The overall cost of producing milk, one liter of milk, which sells for, let's say, uh, eight real. I'm just picking a price. The overall cost is about 3%. You know, it has maybe, you know, have the variable cost, you may have fixed cost. The overall profit margin is, let's say, gross and net profit margin might be 30%, 20%, whatever it is. The overall profitability is relatively high or maybe relatively low. For example, what I tried to explain, and I've done it many times, in the United States, gas stations, gas station where you fill up your gas, is, has extremely small profitability, two, three, four. In other words, the cost which they get the gasoline from the oil companies is very high. The profit margin is razor thin. The overall profitability is tiny. And that's what is, you know, and one of the reasons, of course, is that the gas station industry is extremely competitive in the United States. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, again, this is now for other industries. In the, a similar is now in Bulgaria with pharmaceuticals. The pharmaceutical companies are making huge money, but the pharmacy itself, which sells them because of the huge competition, have a couple of thousand pharmacies in Bulgaria. Vicious cutthroat competition. The pharmacy itself, which sells them, has got to sell them at competitive prices. And the pharmacists themselves aren't making a lot of money, very little. So, you have to again differentiate between the pharmaceutical, which produces the pill, and the pharmacy, which sells it. Two completely different worlds with dramatically different profitabilities. Right? Is that fair, please? Yes. Oh. We've chosen an industry that has several products. Okay. Uh, are you talking about the cost for the whole industry or the, uh, the cost of services? Mostly for the product. In other words, what you do is you have to define again the industry to be manageable and then we're talking specifically to that particular product, whichever you've chosen. It's going to be too hard for us to huh? specify a specific product. It's going to be too hard. Especially well, it could be just toothpaste and that's it. It could be just razors if, if it's shaving, you know, for men it's shaving cream, that's all. You don't have to define Gillette. Right? In the standard, for Gillette, you can just do shaving cream, that's all. And, you know, comp competition with the shaving cream. Or razors. Or it could be, for example, just glasses. I mean, a company can produce 50 products, but it will compete only in one or two, you know. You just use whichever product you choose. You know, it could be just clothing. I mean, they can, Nike will produce, you know, a lot of different things, a lot of sports products. You just choose the training shoes, running shoes. So, you just enter the shoes business. Is that kind of make sense? Uh, I'll try my best, but I'm not sure I'm going to make it because mine is different. But anyhow, okay. uh, oligopoly. Oligopoly, yes. Yeah. Huh? Okay, okay. I understand the definition. Okay. But uh, how to apply it to this question? How do we answer it? Yes. You uh, only uh, state that there are uh, different industries and they understand. That well, they yeah, part of it, if we, with the oligopolies, you got to tell me, well, this is what the oligopoly structure is. There are four competitors. For example, uh, we try the STC, sorry, the, the mobile is a classic example. So you simply tell me this is what it is and what not. Mm -hmm. Then you gotta tell me within the oligopoly, if there is oligopoly, does the one competitor uh, does the one competitor consider the pricing of the other? In other words, are they dependent? Are they interdependent? Are they independent? When the one does something, does the other respond with something else? So you have to give me a little bit more in terms of pricing power or whatnot within the oligopoly. De describe as much as you can to what extent there is. Oligopoly simply means that they are interdependent. So, you will have to describe how they depend on each other, meaning one slashes prices, the other one has to slash prices, or the other one just ignores it, all right? Or one raises prices, the other one follows. Uh, the classic oligopoly in the United States will be the car industry, you know, just three automakers in the United States. Another classic oligopoly in the United States 
will be the airplane, the airline industry. We have just four or five airlines and you know one slashes the prices big time to attract a lot of customers, suddenly everyone else. In other words, to what extent one is responding to strategic behavior of the other. Whether strategic behavior is a new product, new marketing, new pricing strategy, or what not. Now, I'm, I'm entering a little bit the world of marketing, but uh, you know, that's, that's, where, that's, that's where it is. This is where marketing begins. Uh, let's see, is this clear? Good enough? Okay. Um, uh, you said here that excess shortage, uh, shortage of capacity and ease ability to expand capacity. I mean, you told us before that they can't like expand their their supply of. Oil. What, what do you mean they can't? You mean the coal they, gate can't they, expand? No, no, no. I mean, oil. yeah. Yeah. Yes, for oil. Yes, they can't. They but, can't. Yes. But but again, you gotta understand. I never. I didn't make this assignment for the oil industry. I made this assign, assignment to be for cars, yes. to be toothpaste, <laughs> clothing. Uh, cameras, mobile Nokias, or whatever. In other words, I made this assignment to be general to all products. For some, like Nokia, will have extraordinary ability to expand both capacity or at least output. For chips, computer chips like Intel, AMD, extraordinary capacity or over capacity. For oil, little to none. Because there isn't like enough uh, res uh, res reserves. Well, no, no, it's a whole different topic, whole different topic altogether. Why the global oil industry has very little uh, because scarce, scarce, yeah, scarce yes. Why it is working at extremely high utilization rates and has very little excess capacity. It's a whole different topic altogether. So, but I mean, this topic answers this question, right? Correct? Yes, yes, yes. This is what it is. But the idea is for milk, for example, for milk, do they have a lot of excess capacity? If someone, if someone decides to raise the price, can your company increase by 20 or 30 percent the supply of milk and fill the market? So again, the same thing for, 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 for any other industry is if somebody decides to shrink the quantity in order to raise the price, does your company have the ability to fill the void or the gap? Or the opposite, if your company tries to raise the price, do your competitors have the capacity, the spare capacity to flood the market and just take or steal your market share? In other words, are you just going to give them a free gift or not? Well, spare capacity is extremely important in these considerations. Now, again, this is bordering with marketing. It's bordering. Well, it, this is where marketing begins. But you have to you have understand the fundamentals in economics, in micro and in industry analysis, in order to you know expand into marketing. Uh, Professor, can we include the, in, in the crude oil industry uh, the, the, the huge cap, uh, capital as a barrier to enter? Yes, of course. This is the biggest barrier. So In Saudi Arabia? No. 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 Simply because today, in the current environment, Saudi Aramco has a lot of capital. It has no problems finding 10 million, sorry, 10 billion, 20 billion, 30 billion, if they need 30 billion to borrow or do, if they need to invest, can they easily get the 30 billion? Yes. Yes, of course. They have them. They got it. So, for them, capital is not a barrier to entry. So, just it's one, just the government. Well, yeah, just one. Isn't it enough? No, it's more than enough. It's more than enough, just because it's the government doesn't mean, oh, it's just only one, one and only. Well, government in two different ways. Number one, government is the owner of the resource itself, and government is the only one, is actually licensed only a Ramco to do it. So it's actually a, a, a little bit of both, both ownership of the resource and second, you know, the ability to actually uh, do that. You know, you know, whatever the political reasons are, a completely different subject. Of, you know, why they do what they do. Uh, the last question, um, what are you supposed to talk about? Other important specifics of the industry not mentioned in the previous... Whatever they are, each industry will have its own specifics. I can't 
Possibly no. But if you know and understand the industry, there may be other to talk about. Do you think this is going to be in the question? Well, we'll, 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 we'll see. Probably oh, not. Or maybe no. I'll add it as a bonus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So, All right. Yeah. So, can, you, so, can you give us like an example? What yeah. do you mean by uh, other well, uh, I don't know. Milk may have its own specifics. Milk, its but own specific, I mean, maybe something. For the car industry, well, what, what's other specific? I'm I don't know. So let's say for for, 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 for the milk industry, for example, specifics maybe uh, testing the milk for a particular quantity of whatever. Now, melamine. Remember the melamine scandal? Well, that could be a specifics currently okay. existent within the milk industry. I can't possibly okay. know the melamine industry, you know, yeah. or, or forecast or, you know, what not. There may be some, let's say, radiation problems coming out of some product. In other words, uh, uh, tell me something that could not be uh, generally described in the textbook because it's extremely specific to that particular industry. So, so we got to think first of an industry and then we got to think something that's remarkably specific to that industry. For example, specifics for toothpaste was found that they actually had something like po poison when they were made in China. Right? There was something like scandals like this going on. I mean, there are different things which, uh, in other words, the, uh, what, can, what is not foreseeable in general context might be something remarkably important in a particular industry. For example, unforeseeable stuff could be an industry which has religious restrictions over here, whatever the restrictions are, or religious requirements which are not available over there. All right, I'm, I'm, I'm just making up example. Just and, you know, I, I, I can't possibly forecast of what, what that might be because that's what it is. It's unforecastable. All right, good enough. More questions? Okay, well let's pause or stop and.